praise. Amen. How many of y'all know that we can't have revival without unity? And you can't have unity without love, Sister Maria. So we're just going to change things up just a little bit tonight. Opening this service instead of doing prayer. What I want you to do, I want you to get out of your seat. And I want you to go find a handful of people. And if you don't know, pick somebody you don't know. Tell them who you are. Tell them a fact about you. And tell them you're glad that they're here. We're going to worship. We're going to sing an old song. But sometimes you just got to love people. Ain't that right, Uncle Shannon? And I think we got a lot of visitors coming and stuff. We need to get out and just talk and enjoy it for just a minute. Let's fellowship for just a minute and worship in this old song. So let's start picking some people in Jesus' name. The blessed Savior wrote my name when I was born again. He wrote it when He saved my soul. He wrote it out and he made a right my every sinful wrong. He wrote my name on heaven's roll. He wrote my name, my name way up a finger in the Don't that just liven it up in here? Amen. Amen. I feel good after that. I like meeting people. I like seeing smiling faces. Amen. We're a family. And we love family. Amen. We're going to take up prayer at this time now. Are there any prayer requests over on the right hand side? Brother Blake? Right. Sister Scar? Sister Rhonda. Yes, ma'am. Sister Sharon. 
anybody else here in, in the middle, Sister Lynn? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sister Margaret. the Lord. Amen. We'll continue to remember her that it'll be a full recovery in Jesus' name. Anybody else here in the middle? Sister Terry? Yes, ma'am. And Nadine. Yes, let's remember her. Sister Pam. Yes, ma'am. Let's remember her and uh, Sister Virginia also. Both of them are having tough times. Brother Brando. Yes, sir. Amen. Anybody else out here that I missed? Sister Ruth? Yes, ma'am. a lot of needs, a lot of big needs, but I got a big God, amen, and, and I'm thankful that I know that I can take it to him, and that he does fulfill them promises, I've seen it done too many times, I hit, he's done it too many times for me to, to not have faith now, brother Jeff Arnold said, people always talk about their sicknesses and stuff, and they dwell in it, and he says, if it wasn't, if it was the will of God for you to stay sick, or the will of God for you to to face something like that, why do you go to hospitals? We got faith in hospitals, but we need to start putting our faith in God. We can't go, we can't go to a hospital or to an emergency room or something and then not get prayed for. I, I'm not saying nothing about turning down medicine or turning down any of that, but we need to get prayer too. Hey Amen. I've seen it happen too many times. People get healed. People get healed of, of stories like Brother Uncle Pete used to say, walking with his tooth, and it just falls out. Uh, Sister Barker, being here at the Labor Day picnic, just raised up. There's too many things I can count. He's done things to me. Headache, laying there just crying, so sick at my stomach from a headache, and my dad stretches it himself over me, and I'm healed in Jesus' name. It happens too many times. I, I guarantee you, I could pick so many people out of here that could tell you so many things that the Lord has done for you. I don't want to limit him to just those things. He still does it. Somebody asked me one time, do you think that God still does miracles like he did back in the Bible? I said, yes, sir, I do. Yeah. I've seen it happen. The only reason he doesn't do as many is because we don't have the faith like they had. It all, all it takes is faith the size of a mustard seed. So I want us to pray right now with faith. If we can't all, let's stand if you're able. And let's take these needs before the Lord. There's many of them. But I'm believing that God is going to make a way in some of these lives. And he's going to heal some people. He's going to heal their minds and their, their physical bodies. That when you're praying for one thing, he's going to go ahead and do the full circle, do it all. You're praying for their healing in their body, but that prodigals are going to return. You're praying for your prodigal to return, but they're going to be healed in their body also. I'm believing that God's going to do it all. So can we take these needs before the Lord right now for a full miracle? God, I'm believing 
God, there's so many needs, so many people and situations, and it didn't take me all night to go through every one of them. God, there's people that are facing that, that are facing opposition in their life, that are facing uh, loneliness in their life, that are that are just facing different things and sicknesses, cancer. God, but I believe that you're you're way bigger than cancer is, God. And I'm believing that with the prayer that we pray tonight, with with just my little bit of faith, that it can make all the difference in somebody's life. That just my little bit of prayer and faith can intercede for somebody and touch them. That just me speaking to you tonight, right now, that we're going to see miracles done in these people's lives. God, and that not only that's going to happen, but that you're going to do exceedingly above all that we could ask. That our prayer is going to become more fervent. That we're going to start praying harder and more bold. Because I've seen you done it before. You've done it before in my life. You're going to do it again in my life. God, you've done it for my brother and my sister. And you're going to do it again. You're going to do it tonight. Right now, I'm claiming it by faith. I'm claiming it by faith. And I'm going to continue to live my life in according to that. I'm going to worship you the rest of this service because you just answered my prayer. I'm going to step out and do what you want me to do because you just met me halfway. In the name of Jesus, can we all give him a hand clap of praise for the miracles that he just did? In Jesus' name. And you may be seated. 
you ever just find yourself just thinking about it, thinking about him, what we just talked about, what we just prayed about, thinking about what he has done? You'll find yourself in a whole lot better state of mind. We get focused too much on the things of this life and things that we got coming up, work, things we want to do, things we need to do around the house. And our minds get caught up in it. We get stressed out and it's where anxiety comes from and then before you know it, you're depressed. But when you find yourself thinking, just thinking back when he did this and when he did that, like I said, we could all raise our hand and, and testify to it. I get to thinking sometimes when dad laid it over me and I was healed. I get to thinking sometimes when me and my brother had stayed up late talking about heaven or hell that we needed to be right or when my brother decided to be baptized and all we had was an old green pool out back I get to thinking about people that have in my family that have returned I remember I don't know about y'all but when they do return I remember those services and I won't ever forget them because as soon as, I, there's something I don't know if it's just me but whenever I see people in my family come back, Uncle Shannon, when I see you return, when I see what you was went what you went through and where you're at now, it does something to me. I sit here and I think about those things. And when you think about those those things, you get peace. Because the Lord is with you. We need more of that. We get stressed out too many times. And this is me speaking. We get caught up in too many things. I get caught up. Even in, in church things, I'll get to trying to study this and that and overwhelm myself. And then I, before you know it, I didn't do nothing. I didn't pray. I didn't read my Bible. I didn't do nothing. I was just thinking too much. When all I needed to do was just think back when he did this, when he did that. There's comfort knowing that my strength and that my comfort's in the Lord. There's a, Dad preached a message before, and I won't ever forget it. That scripture, I forget what it is, but... The Lord's so many things. He's our Savior, Comforter, Protector, everything. But He's our Abba. And that translated pretty much means He's our Daddy. He's that person you run to when you're hurt. And you have that emotional connection to. And I don't ever want to lose sight of that. I want to stay with that comfort in my heart. Amen. We're going to take up the tithing and offering at this time. And Sister Heidi could put the the different ways to give up here. Um, the app, GiveLify, which we've, we've beat this, beat this and beat this, and it's pretty much what I use, and mostly a lot of the younger folks, but it's very easy to use. Uh, PayPal is available at riverbendpentecostals.com. You can mail cash or checks to Riverbend Pentecostals, 1031 Mill Street, P.O. Box 477 at New Madrid, Missouri, and that's 63869. God's been good to us. Amen. And if you need something from Him, give something to Him. Amen. If we can all let's stand, we're going to take up our tithing and offering this time. Remember, our tithing's in our golden pan and the offering's in the wooden pans. And uh, they're going to sing a song and come and give as the Lord has given unto you. Say this prayer with me. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, Interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give as the Lord has continued to give to us. If anybody ask you, if anybody ask you where I'm going, where I'm going, where I'm going, going soon. If anybody ask you, if anybody ask you. Yeah.
take the pain. I can take the pain. The heartache and the shame. The heartache and the shame. Because my comfort is in knowing I'll soon be gone. And if God will give me grace. to the Lord a little bit. Come on. I'm going up yonder. So I can rejoice in that. I can rejoice no matter what I'm going through right now, no matter what the shame that I'm going through, no matter what it is, no matter the pain, I can take it because my reward is in heaven. My reward is in heaven. Amen. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to say one more time before we turn this service over to Brother GL and allow the kids to go back. We got a good looking crowd tonight. Yes, we Amen. I'm thankful to see every one of you. Uh, Sundays have been phenomenal. Wednesdays are phenomenal also. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for everybody that's here, every visitor. I hope you come back. Amen. The Lord was just saying, shut up and let's preach. <laughs> Amen. If the kids can go ahead and come up. I'm glad to see that number increasing also. Amen. Amen. As Brother Blake said Sunday, or last Wednesday, that's the next generation. And we still got some at camp. And they're having a good time. The Holy Ghost is being outpoured. Amen. I'm seeing good reports. Amen. Brindley received the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to believe more in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, go ahead and give it to the Lord. It's good. It's good. It's worth rejoicing. Y'all go ahead and go back. Lead us, Bo. Amen. And the youth can go ahead and file in right behind them. And Brother Richard's got some great stuff in order there. And y'all's going to get to hear the man preach right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can be seated if you'd like to. If you uh, need a handout and uh, you forgot to bring yours back, uh, raise your hand. Brother Shannon has a few to uh, give away. Make sure that if we have guests here that haven't been here previously for this series, that you make sure they get the first opportunity at it. Amen. I, uh, I'm happy to tell you that unless something's cattywampus and it's not, there was uh, 98 here tonight. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? And we got a whole slew of folks out of town sick at church camp, so... Uh, I'm going to tell you what, that's, uh, that's about equal to 300 on Sunday. Huh? Amen? Amen? Thank you for coming tonight. We love the Word, and we love you. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> if 
Thank you, buddy. Now, is there anybody that'd like to have a copy was, was embarrassed to raise your hand? Because you thought I was going to do something? There's some more up there if you'd like to come get one later. Um, the Lord's Prayer pattern. I believe this is about week five in a one-night Bible study. If y'all weren't such a joy to minister to, I maybe would have got done quicker. But uh, um, how many of you are trying this, some form or the other? Let me tell you something, six hands raised up in 90 some odd people don't look near as good as it does in 30 some people. I just want you to ask yourself a question. This is not a, like, this ain't the 11th commandment, thou shalt pray the Lord's prayer pattern. But why not? Why not? Maybe I need to ask who's praying beyond the blessing. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, if, if we're not going to pray, we're not going to have a church. And I'm not talking about praying here. I'm talking about every day of your life. You need to have a prayer time. It'll fix a whole lot of what you think's wrong with everybody else. Huh? Huh? Amen. Somebody said one time they started, a, they got them a prayer life going and found out everybody in the whole world got fixed when they started praying. <laughs> and nothing changes but you and me. Learn to pray. Um, let's review just a little bit. John chapter, I mean, Luke chapter number one. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. A little new thought here. They used a frame of reference for prayer that they knew, which was as John taught his disciples. And it was okay for a starting point, but it wasn't what Jesus had for them. He offered them a connection that was theirs. It wasn't going to be through somebody else and theirs alone. Get this. Through learning to pray, you can be the one that becomes the motivation for somebody else to want to learn how to pray. Right. said, teach as John taught his disciples to pray. But the plan was for it to be a multiplier, that when they learn how to pray the way Jesus prayed, everybody's going to keep growing in their prayer life. So... Uh, it was Jesus' example that they were interested in. We found out that we're complete in Jesus Christ. We found out that we were made by him and for him and that he has put us where he wants us and that everybody ought to seek after the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Anybody can get a hold of the Lord. Anybody can get a hold of the Lord. Now, we're talking about the church becoming who God designed for the church to be, which is the conduit by which heaven flows into earth. Amen? Amen. So, so when he said unto them, when you pray, say, everybody said say. say. That means you got to say something when you pray. And we're learning how to do that. Amen. Okay? So, uh, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, that's the Lord's Prayer, right? But we're learning that more than just to be in the Lord's Prayer, it is a prayer you can pray. Right? right? But it's not, let me just whoop this Lord's Prayer on us real fast and be done. It's also a pattern for prayer that can get, get our prayer life focused where it needs to be. Right. 
Now, here's the deal. We got to make a decision. Do we want to be saved or not? If we're going to be saved, we're going to have to not just be hearers, but doers of the word. When he says, when you pray, say, what is he assuming? You're going to pray, period. Okay. Lord, help me. The first step is step one, obviously, which is our Father. It is our connect point. He's the vine, we're the branches. And without him, we can do nothing. Right? Got to stay connected to the Lord. We can't do nothing without him. And prayer is our connect point. And he is our father, is our connect point. Because he put us here. He created us and made us for where we are. Second step is who art in heaven. That is simply establishing my focus is in heaven, not on earth. My focus is in Jesus Christ, not in other people. All right? Because if I want to help other people, I'm going to have to connect to him. Because I can't do nothing for anybody if I'm not connected to him. Right. Establishing my focus in heaven on heavenly things and the fact that I lift my head is moving me away from earth and earthly things, which is generally people or circumstances. I got to get my eyes off of it before I can do any good. I'm going to do good tonight. I don't care what you think. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name, step number three. Step number three. I am establishing the holiness and the supremacy of the name of Jesus where? In my life. Step number four, thy kingdom come. It's where I declare him king and my submission to him as king and I relinquish all power and authority to him. Has anybody besides me, since we've been praying this way, found a time or two or three when we climbed back on the throne and had to be put in our place? I did this morning. I got into praying and realized I was all messed up. Because I was praying as if I was the one in charge. Guess what the Holy Ghost said? Surprise, surprise, surprise. It ain't working. There ain't but one king. His name is Jesus. Got to get that established. What the, the step, I can't keep track of all the recovery steps because it's got like step one and then 25 sections in step one. Brother Shannon, he facilitates over there about like I do in here. We started on step one six months ago. We're still on step one. <laughs> Not really, but one of the first steps, one of the first uh, tenets of step one is I am not God. The same thing is I'm not king. I am not king. Now that ruffles a little bit of feathers sometimes because we like to think we're the boss. Don't challenge the Lord. Don't challenge the Lord. Step five. Thy will be done. This is where I seek to understand any areas of my life that are not surrendered to the will of God. I feel like, well, there's getting to be so many people in here, I can't hide my eyeballs. I don't know what I mean by that. It's like I preach at the same one all the time unless I got an empty spot to hide my eyes. I'm just going to have to turn around and start preaching to the wall. I feel like this particular area as we are teaching it is pointed to more toward seasoned, more seasoned saints than it is new worshipers. Because you know new worshipers let me give you a little secret about new worshipers. They love everything. And they believe every word you say. And they try their best to do it. 
It's only after we've been here a while that we think we might know better. There's some areas in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, that we've got to pray honestly, thy will be done. Seek to understand any areas of my life that are not surrendered to the will of God and expressing my intent to him to surrender. In earth as it is in heaven, step six. It's a little bit of a simpler one. Not a lot of ways to elaborate on it. Probably as I study more, I will. But simply in accord with 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 9, when it says we are laborers together with him, it's a beautiful thing that takes place in your life when you start working with the Lord instead of against the Lord. The way, how, how do we work against the Lord? Let me tell you that the main this way is him having to try to get us straightened up so he can fulfill his purpose. That's the main way we work against the Lord. It's almost like we distract heaven. Uh-huh. Okay. So let's move on in. Anybody have any questions or comments about steps one, two, three, four, five, and six? There, there's somebody here. You're here tonight. And I feel just very strongly to tell you, here's how you're going to know this. I'm not looking. I'm not looking because I want to. Quit being a hard head. Quit being stubborn. I felt before I ever walked in here today, matter of fact, I struggled with it so much. God wants to do great things in your life and through you. This ain't about getting you to let somebody else be the boss. This is about God loosening his will in your life. So please just... If you found yourself hard-headed and saying things like, I ain't getting no handout. I ain't doing it. Don't believe it. Don't understand it. I'm satisfied with, uh, now I lay me down to sleep. I don't know where, I do know where that came from. That came from the Lord. If, if that's you, is that you, Brother Blake? Uh, I knew I was safe looking over here because I'm, I'm nervous everywhere else. <laughs> All right. Our daily bread. Boy, I waited off in this today, Brother Jerry. And I come up with some stuff now. I'm going to try to get through at least a couple more steps tonight. What do we do on step number seven? I've touched on it a couple of times already. What is step seven? You all got a paper there? Our daily, that's right, Sister Leanne, our daily bread. What do we do there? In its simplest form, what do we do in our daily bread? Read the word, pray the word, recite the word. It's all about the word of God. How many have been working on their spiritual smorgasbord, their scriptural smorgasbord? Two, three, four, five, six. I brought mine with me, seven. I brought mine with me tonight. I got five, one, two, three, four different areas, five passages in each area. It don't take long. I started to print them off, and then the Lord said, you better not. They don't need yours. Huh? They don't need yours. They got to get their own. So build your own scriptural smorgasbord, a scriptural menu as it were, based upon what the Spirit quickens to your mind during prayer. Some of the things are maybe your ego's a little bit out of check. That's the one I was thinking about me. And so when my ego's out of check, what do you think I do? What does it mean when you get a little bit full of yourself? What do you need? Humble, humility. So, Brother Shannon, I found me some scriptures that reinforce that idea, that ideal, all right? And I, I wrote down, this is, 
So about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17 verses that I can pray, that I can pray that deal with getting my pride in check. Why do I need to do that? Because the Bible says if I don't, I'm going to be messed up. Right? Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. If I'm too full of myself, I better get it dealt with. And trust me, the Lord is going to lead me there. And we're learning how to do it. Our daily bread is where we pray the word of God. And it's called our daily bread for a number of reasons, but primarily is that it is as essential to our life as food is to our bodies. View the word as nutrition. Build your own scriptural menu or scriptural smorgasbord. You know where you struggle. Now, how many think right now if I just said stop, let's do our homework, you could pop off about three or four areas you know you need to deal with often. Okay? It's not a mystery. I don't know why I'm having a little bit of trouble tonight, but I'm gonna, it ain't going to be for long. Okay? Quote the scripture. Read the scripture. Pray them out loud unto the Lord. Speak them with understanding of their applicability and their authority. And for every situation you face, I started to do it today and I decided I'm not doing everything for them. But I got a three-hole punch I'll loan you. You can buy your own at Walmart for about $10. But it's a beautiful thing to go to, the, to Walmart and get you some of them three-ring binders and start building you a prayer book. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I feel the Holy Ghost moving on me. We got to get serious about this praying stuff. Let me tell you something. God, I'm not going to say it. I'm not sure I'm in the spirit or not, but if it comes back to me directly, it's going to fly. Sometimes I'm just feeling ornery and hateful. So the Lord leads me to pray love and compassion scriptures. Again, I quote them. I preach them to myself. The word of God. John chapter number 6, Jesus speaks of the necessity, I said necessity, of eating his flesh and drinking his blood and that their life depends on it. Now, it was hard to comprehend for them when Jesus started talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Man, that sounds like something out of a Dracula book or movie, Right? Don't be afraid to say, hey, man, I don't know what to think about that. I know it's in the Bible, but that kind of, ooh, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Here's why. Jesus acquainted eating his flesh and drinking his blood with the manna that was given to their forefathers in the wilderness. Now, the reason why this is difficult to comprehend is because comprehension is in accord with which lens we're looking through. When viewed through a natural lens, this seems kind of repulsive. But when we view it through a spiritual lens, it seems kind of attractive. I said when we view it through a carnal lens, it's repulsive. Like, oh, no, it doesn't sound right. But when you view it through a spiritual lens, it's attractive. Here's why. John 6 and 63 says... It is the spirit that quickeneth. Now manna, what was manna? All right, looked kind of like a little coriander seed, a little round angel food, okay? What was the purpose of it? It was food for the children of Israel, right? It had a purpose. Without it, what was going to happen? Starved to death. All right? The only human beings that ever experienced manna was the children of Israel. All right? And when they crossed over Jordan, the manna stopped. 
when they went into the land that flowed with milk and honey. It was given to them for the express purpose of sustaining them and keeping them until they reached the promised land. It's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. I don't know if I'm going to unpack this right or not, but I see it in my mind. I just don't know if my mind can take it to my mouth where we can understand it. Why would he say the flesh profiteth nothing? It's the spirit that quickeneth. This is something that's spiritually discerned, not fleshly discerned. The flesh profits nothing. I'm going to meddle a little bit right now. Were they, in fact, looking for something to benefit the flesh? Undoubtedly, because Jesus Christ doesn't speak idle words. The reason he said the flesh profiteth nothing is they were looking for the flesh to profit something. Now, I'm going to mess with us just a little bit right now. It kind of hurt my feelings a little bit, too, because... I kind of like that pie in the sky stuff that we like to preach about coming to the Lord. But the truth is, if you and I come to the Lord simply to get out of our circumstances, we might do it for a minute. Understand, when Jesus speaks, he speaks perfect words. Perfect in timing and perfect into whose ears he hears it. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay? They are spiritually discerned, but they produce life. If you don't have the right attitude, the Bible seems stupid. If our heart is not in the right place, the Bible will make you upset. But if our heart is in the right place, we will welcome it and embrace it because why? Can't live without it because it's the daily bread. It's the sustenance for the spirit. Come on now. Jesus speaks clearly and plainly to the inclination that many have that coming to Jesus is going to make my present circumstances better. We come to him seeking some sort of respite from some carnal malady or carnal situation. Now, while he does hear our prayers, heal our sickness, and deliver us when we're in captivity, these are not because we showed up and asked him to. These are because we showed up looking for him. So I want to just change your focus just a little bit if we think, well, I'm going to start going to church because I want more money and I want to be healthier and I want to have a good marriage and all of that. You know what? All of that's great and all of that's a byproduct, but you better come to the house of God because you're looking for Jesus because he's the one that's going to fix everything. And what did he tell the Pharisees? Search the scriptures. For in them you think you find the words of eternal life. Read them because they are they which testify of me. The Pharisees have been reading the Bible since who flung the chunk? But Jesus showed up and they did not recognize him because they were looking through a carnal lens and not a spiritual one. They're looking through something that will satisfy the flesh and allow them to maintain their standing as the elite in the community. And Jesus Christ showed up, the out-of-work carpenter's son from Nazareth. Then do we know that nothing good comes out of Nazareth? Huh? But Jesus showed up loving the poor and loving the afflicted and loving the diseased and the outcast flocked to him and the Pharisees hated him for it. I want to tell you right now, I don't want to miss out on what the Lord is doing. I don't want to miss out because of my messed up thinking. I want to humble myself under the hand of God and I want to be a part of what he's doing. So this daily bread... Yes, you are what you eat.
quickening. The Spirit's quickened. I looked it up. You know what that word means? To empower with divine life. When my spirit is in the right place, my flesh comes into submission. There is within the word of God resurrection, life, strength, hope, healing, and reconciliation. Hear me now as I tell you. The reason why we can't come to God and hope to have our needs met as the basis for our relationship is because when you come to God and your spirit aligns with the will of God, what you thought was a need before probably ain't going to be a need now anyway. Are we hearing? You hearing me? You come to, oh, God, I need this. And kind of like, look at this. You got young, beautiful young lady. You done fell in love with a knucklehead. And mom and daddy don't like him and preacher don't like him, so I'm going to win him to the Lord and it's going to fix everything. <laughs> but you're going to mess around and get a good dose of the Holy Ghost and you're going to see that knucklehead for who he is. A trick that the devil, boy, I'm meddling right now, but I love it. A trick that the devil is used, you blinded by your emotions and blinded by your feelings, but when you come into the presence of the Lord and your spirit lines up, you realize you didn't need that nincompoop in your life anyway. I ain't getting a lot of amens from certain areas of the house. I didn't bring it out here with me tonight, but I'm going to let you know something. The Bible is going to be the authority in all of our situations. You cannot feel nothing. Now, I heard somebody the other day, I said that, you know, and, and sometimes like, oh, I've always felt the Lord. Well, let me tell you something. You've got something special that maybe everybody else don't have. Because we go through dry places. I heard Brother Tom Fred Tenney say one time that he went two years and never felt the presence of the Lord. So did he quit? No. You want to know why we don't quit when we don't feel the presence of the Lord? Because we got the Word. And the Word trumps feeling six days a week and twice on Sunday. Huh? better fall in love with that word. That's why the daily bread, I revisit it again. That daily bread, you got to be reading the Bible. You say, well, I don't read the daily bread. I don't read from Genesis to Revelation. Read it however you want to. If you want to break out the 119th Psalm and read it 52 times a year, read it, baby. But whatever you do, read the word. Get the word in us. When my grandma died, I spoke at her funeral. Just a portion, I didn't preach the main part, but I spoke at her funeral, and as a gift, my aunt bought me something called God's Promises for Every Need. I call it the Bible Promise Book. Anybody ever had one of them? Anybody? If you don't have one, buy one, because it's going to take the daily bread to a new dimension. Because it says, if you feel depressed, and it's got a whole list of scriptures you can read. All right, it's got, it says, uh, if you're broke, it's got a whole list of scriptures that you can read. If your faith's not what it should be, it's got a whole list of scriptures that you can read. Fall in love with the word of God. It'll help you when nothing else will. Right. All right. Any comments about that? Any, anybody want to add anything to that? Boy, I'm, I'm really feeling like I'm going uphill in a mud hole tonight. But we, we better, yeah, I understand, I'm, I'm not looking for compliments right now, though I like them, don't get me wrong, but we got to get the word in us, folks. We got to get some effort in us. We got to get something that shakes us out. I, I, I want to tell you something, Brando, you made my week this week when you put that on Facebook, because there's a whole lot of stupid on there. But when you put that on Facebook and said you watched Sunday's sermon and you started squalling and he texted me and said, I'll see you Wednesday night, and guess what? He's here. You know what he said? He said, I started watching that and I felt like the Lord was going to come and I had to start making some changes and he took about six million songs that was bad out of his phone. Not really that many, but he told me 422 or something like that. Right? How many? 244. You say, well, what's that got to do with anything? Got everything. It's called repent. Yeah. 
If you ain't watched Sunday service yet, you need to. Jesus is getting ready to come. He's getting ready to come. Get the word in you. Now let's talk about step eight. Forgiveness. We now come, this is the only prayer pattern. I think I told you last week, most prayer patterns start with this. This is the only prayer pattern that I've ever followed that forgiveness is down at the bottom. But Sister Marie, I think it's a great, for the reason Brother Burns used in his article and, and what I see here is because I may not be in the right mindset to repent the way I need to till I've let the Lord do some work on me. I may not even be repenting for things I need to be repenting of until the Lord's done some work on my heart. And now I come to the place of forgiveness with a broken and contrite heart. I've been praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I've been praying, Lord, I want to line up with whatever you got going on in heaven. I want it to be just like that here on earth. I've done made a connection with my Father, and I've done lifted my eyes to the heavens, and you know what? My prayer is going to be effective in a way it never has been. Because now I'm not examining myself in the light of my own mind. I'm examining myself in the light of the Spirit. Sorrowful and repentant. My heart should now be in a place Two things happen in forgiveness prayers. What are they? I ask God to forgive me. And then I start dealing with that stuff I've got against other people. I can now both receive forgiveness and offer forgiveness. And when I got a right heart, they don't have to be sorry for me to forgive them. When I preached, and we referenced it last week, uh, that was the first day Sister Leanne came back to church in a long, long time. And, and I preached the power of forgiveness and used a forgiveness prayer that Brother David Shatwell uh, had shared with us in his sermon on the tragedy of a wounded spirit. Everybody ought to watch that. It'll bless you. But one of the things he does is he starts, we call out each situation where forgiveness is necessary, both from our heart toward God and from our heart toward others. And I'm going to tell you right now, you start asking God to forgive people, he'll just keep on bringing every situation in your life to your mind. I'm just telling you what happened with me right here in this sanctuary. I walked back and forth, Sister Maria, for 45 minutes forgiving people, forgiving situations. Some of them I hadn't even thought of in years. But you know the book says, if you don't forgive folks that's done you wrong, God will not forgive you of your sins. Boy, I wish Brother Pete was here tonight. I'd be getting some amens one way or the other. And he'd probably done leaned up on the back of his seat and have his hand about like this right now. And when Brother Pete did that and the Holy Ghost started moving, There'd be about like 12 people go to the bathroom all at once because they knew Brother Pete about to come back and get a hold of you and say, boy, let's go pray. Are you comfortable with somebody being lost and the sin that causes them not to make it was done against you? If God's not willing that any should perish, I can't be willing that any perish either. Especially when what might cause them to be lost 
is a sin they committed toward me. Remember I told us last week, anybody remember the illustration I used about this? Because somebody might say, well, I don't believe we can pray for other people's forgiveness. And I said, well, somebody forgot to tell Stephen about that. And somebody also forgot to tell Jesus about that. Because if I read the book right, they was both with their last breath praying for somebody else's forgiveness. Now, I don't know if you've ever read in the Bible, but I preached a message about it. If you hadn't read it, I might preach it again. But there's a passage in the book of Psalms that says, the prayers of the David, the son of Jesse, are ended. And we researched in the Bible how what a blessing it is when the last prayers you pray are interceding for somebody else rather than for yourself. How beautiful it is that when we have so aligned our will with the will of God that with our dying breath, we do not try to hold on to life, but we make one last intercession for somebody who's messed up. This came to me, Luke the 15th chapter, the parable of what we call the prodigal son. It's really the parable of a father and two sons. But I'm a son and I'm a brother. I'm a father. But I realized something in prayer this week. Boy, I could wade off right now. We have very little objectivity when it comes to our children. We don't see them clearly as we should. Matter of fact, your child can do something. My child. Yours nothing, my child, Brother Ronnie, I'll speak in the first person. My child can do something horrendously stupid and I know it. And you attack them for it, I'm coming after you, not them. Oh, I got to get over here a little bit because I'm fixing this to rattle our cages just a little bit. So Sister Maria... We give our children the benefit of the doubt always, always. And I'm thinking of Luke, the 15th chapter, where we have a father and two brothers. And I realized something. When I pray this forgiveness prayer, I've got to pray, Lord, help me be the father. I don't know if that's clicking just yet or not. Because when you're a father or a mother, whatever the case may be, you give your kids the benefit of the doubt. But when you got the spirit of the brother on you, I don't think we're, I don't know that we're grasping this. I have to seek in this prayer connection. You remember back, man, I feel Jesus. Back at the beginning, I connect to the Father. And now in forgiveness, my attributes will be those not of the brother, but of the Father. Look at here. Oh, I feel it. I feel him moving right now. How many of us, I'm going to raise my hand. It applies to me. I'm praying for deliverance. But how many of us, when the Lord starts correcting us, we automatically go to default mode where we can find one of the brothers who we ain't as bad as. We like to start justifying our actions 
based upon the fact that they were wrong, but they weren't as wrong as so-and-so. I know that's right, Sister Crystal. I appreciate you. You move to the front row, I'm liable to run the aisles every service. Because I know it's the truth. Paul told the Corinthian church, he said, you folks are messed up because you keep measuring yourselves by yourselves. He said, that's not wise. You want to know why that's not wise? We was never supposed to measure ourselves by the brother, but by the father. The reason why it's unwise is you're measuring yourself by the wrong standard. The standard of measurement whereby we try to live our lives and to be pleasing to him is the one that he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said you measure yourself among yourselves, you're unwise because you're going to always fall short. You start measuring yourself by Jesus Christ. And what attribute of Jesus Christ is most prevalent in him? What's that, Sister Nadine? Forgiveness. Let me tell you something. Jesus' forgiveness is a common denominator among all 7 billion plus people in the world. It's the thing he does the most. And if I'm going to try to be like him, then it better be the thing I do the most. What y'all think about that, Sister Callie? Huh? Forgiveness. It's what everybody has in common is you know him like the forgiver. When I seek to be like him, then I have to accept the fact that forgiveness is a part of the package. Number nine, lead and deliver. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Here's a time of preparation. Everybody knows hell is coming after you. You have, through eight steps, drawn closer to the Lord. You're connected to the Lord. There has got to be a time of preparation. This is where I pray, Lord, don't let me be ignorant of Satan's devices. Don't let me go out like some kind of chump. I ain't the devil's whipping boy, and I ain't the devil's tool. I want to be aware and I want to be ready to be for whatever trials or opposition comes my way. I am proactively preparing to enter the desert. To seal in my mind in this prayer, lead me not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I'm going to seal Ah, help me right now. Holy Ghost, I'm going to seal into my mind and into my spirit that whatever I go through, God is for me and God is with me. God is leading me and God is delivering me and i got to get it settled right now. Because my faith will come under attack and i got to get prepared for that to ensure and condition myself for the upcoming struggles. I'll say it again, proactively preparing. Two aspects. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Here's how I see it. Lead us not into temptation is focused on keeping me from going places I shouldn't. All right? And understand that is both literally and figuratively. That is both in real life and on social media. Come on, somebody. I have yet to find anybody whose mind, life, or opinion was changed by something somebody put on Facebook. 
So let's stop trying. I saw it again this week, and it made me mad. It fired me up. Somebody got a bad ice cream out of Sonic, took a big old picture of it, and look, look what they did to me. You think exactly that Sonic saw you coming into their parking lot and said, let's see if we can give them some bad service and some bad food so they'll put it on Facebook so everybody knows. Hear me now, Christian people ought not be a part of that. I don't want Sonic to go out of business. I want him to do good. Why do we have such an attraction to somebody's demise? I don't know who. So I am praying, Lord, let me deal properly with the place of temptation. So lead is focused on where I go. Deliver then. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead is dealing where stuff I get into. Deliver is stuff that comes to me. Make sense? Now, where my feet go, I got some control over that. But the stuff that comes spiraling through the universe, I don't have a lot of control over it except cut it off at the pass and lead and deliver prayers, right? Do you all understand that when I pray this, I'm getting ahead of the devil? I'm getting ahead of trials? I'm getting ahead of heartaches? I'm preparing myself for the inevitable jump that I'm going to meet or is going to meet me. How many times mom and daddy would try to tell me they're worried about me, can't stay out too late, and got to come home on time. And, and let me tell you something, I'm for all that stuff. Brother Ronnie, daddy would often say, it ain't really you I'm worried about, boy. It's all them other people out there on the road. You got a defense against it. This is what I'm praying right now. And lead us not into temptation. Don't let my feet take me in places where I got a chance of getting messed up. But also the stuff that's going to come my way that I don't have any say so over. Let me be prepared for that as well. Has anybody figured out yet if we pray this prayer pattern, it'll change your life? Amen. Then step 10. From Matthew chapter number 6, verse 13, gives us a conclusion. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. What's the most important word in that verse? I wish. The most important word is thine. Because guess what we've done got established? Ownership. And kingdom describes the infinite area of his sovereignty. Power describes the infinite area of his authority. And glory describes the infinite manifestation of his excellence. It describes that wherever I go and whatever I do, I'm doing it in him. And I'm doing it with him in me. This is where I celebrate. I am that I am. He's omnipotent, I'm not present and omniscient. And he's here with me, he's in me, and I am in him. The majesty of heaven is with me, and I celebrate the awareness of who he is. This is when I start praising God. Because I recognize how big he is, how much area he covers, and how much power he manifests. And I've reached a conclusion by simply praising him because of who he is. 
not of what he's done. Because, Brother Ronnie, that's all been taken care of. And I realized, Sister Maria, it was already done. So I'm going to dance. I'm going to praise. I'm going to worship. This is when I'm going to get excited because I done fought hell and I done fought the flesh. I done got the sins out of the way and I've got the king. I've got the king on the throne. So I'm going to dance and I'm going to worship because you know what's happened? Everything's in order. Everything is where it's supposed to be. Everything's happening like it's supposed to be happening, at least for today. But you know something, Melissa, honey, that's why I got to go back again tomorrow because I'm going to get it all lined back up again and I'm going to crucify the flesh again. And that's why Paul said, I die daily. Stand with me. It doesn't matter what I feel. I'm telling you from experience. Some mornings you'll pray this prayer and you'll go all the way through it and you won't really feel much. And there'll be other mornings that you don't think you're going to make it to the end because every step feels like heaven just came down and sat with you. But the truth is the feeling doesn't matter. The knowledge is I'm connected to the Lord. How do I know that? Come on now. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. And the Lord said, you got it. And you know why I know I'm connected? You want to know why I know? Because I obeyed what the Lord said. I did what the Lord said. And it's that simple. Say, well, I can't figure all this out. And I don't know what I get. Look, just do what the Lord says and let him train you and lead you and direct you. He promised he would. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for your word. Thank you for truth. Thank you, God, for this plan that you've given us. And we thank you, Lord, for all of these precious people that you've allowed us to pastor and lead. And there's not a soul under the sound of my voice that wants to be lost. Now, the enemy's come after us, and he's waylaid us, and he's made us trip and stumble and fall. And some of us are learning how to live for you in a new way and learning how to live for you again. And, and every day there's new revelation that's flowing. I'm glad to know, Lord, that your hand is upon each of us. And, and no matter what level of our discipleship and growth we're at, your hand is upon us. And we can celebrate together in the presence of the Lord for what you're doing, for what you've done, and what you're going to do in each of our lives. I pray, God, that there will be many many that will pursue this pattern of prayer as a new avenue of touching you and crucifying the flesh. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, elements class. 11 o'clock, worship. Team number one, church cleaning. VBS is scheduled for July the 19th through the 22nd. And listen to me, please. July the 21st, that's a Wednesday night, there will be no Bible study in the sanctuary, not on the Riverbend campus. We will only have VBS on July the 21st on Wednesday night, okay? You are all welcome to come. I would encourage you to at least come one night of VBS and support the children because we had one more catch the Holy Ghost last night. Ain't that, ain't that great, Sister Leanne? <laughs> Brindley got the Holy Ghost. Sister Kim said it happened just like Brother Burke told us it would. And then Mac went down to the altar and almost got the Holy Ghost. And I don't know if that little rascal's ever been to the altar before. So she's expecting him to receive the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. It's a beautiful thing. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to sign up to receive the text messages from the church, prayer requests, announcements, etc., please see Sister Amanda. She can help you do that very quickly. And July the 17th, that's on a Saturday, River Bend Kids' first annual summer blast. There'll be a bouncy house. It's going to be a fun day, a lot of stuff going on, kind of a kickoff for BBS. You don't want to miss it. Any more announcements?
you're dismissed.